All right, so tonight we're just going to be going over, again, just an overview. Um, this is part four now. Um, so all the other part one through three have been listed on our YouTube, um, or you can download the um, links or the downloads from our website. And you can get the direct links from there, or you can just go right to our YouTube channel and you should see them in the latest videos. Hey, Pamela, welcome. All right, so tonight we're just going to cover, we went over the mock ups a little bit last week. Um, so today we're going to finish with the mock up creator, and then we'll run through the magic tab. All right, so. At any point, if you guys have questions or want to see anything again, just let me know. And as I see those come in, I'll try to answer as many as possible. So have you guys used our mock-up creator yet? Have we added any custom items to our mock-ups? Not yet, a little. No, not yet. Okay. So the majority looks like we haven't yet. So last week we kind of ran through all the custom ones that we are all the like preset ones that are in the software. What you can actually do is add any type of mock-up to the software. So whether it be a t-shirt, um, a cup, a tumbler, a mug, a hat, um, you can take a picture of a wall, you can take a picture of a car. You know, anything we're applying a decal or um, design to, we can take like an image of that and bring it up, bring it in the software and use it as a mock up. So, right now, what I did is I went to Google and I just typed in white gilded t shirt and I got this blank. I just copied and pasted it right into Corel Draw. So, you can see if I put a background on this t-shirt that I have it has the white background attached to it so it's not already trimmed out like we're about to do so we have two types of mock-ups that we're able to add to the program so we can do a color change or just what we call just an image mock-up so to be able to use a design as a color changing mock-up the first rule is it has to start as a white product. So in this case, I'm using a white Gildan t-shirt. So we'll run through the same setup with just some type of colored t-shirt. And we'll show you the difference of using or setting up a color change and a cutout, just a cutout image mockup. And it's really, when it comes down to it, you're just clicking one button um, to create each one. And that's the that's really the only difference of adding a custom mockup. Right. So I'll go ahead and we'll just bring this to the center of our page, just like this. So we're on our mockup on the mockup creator tab. The first thing we'll see is auto boundary tracer and manual boundary tracer. So what we would what we want to try to do first is the auto boundary tracer. So we're going to select our cutout. So our, just our mock up here. So this is the copy and paste from Google. And I'm going to make sure it's selected and I'm going to hit create auto boundary. So by doing this, what it, we're hoping for is that it finds the outside of the t-shirt pretty much exactly like it did. It finds the outside of the t-shirt and traces it. Now you can see this option right here, this inside contour is set to 0 0.02. What that's doing is it's finding the outside of our t-shirt and bringing the contour in the distance of that 0 0.02. So the reason it does that is you can see when we're really zoomed in, sometimes the outside is a little bit more gradient. So it kind of cuts all that out. So you can, if you want it in a little bit more, or you don't want it to do that, you just want it to go right on the outside, you can set this to a higher number or zero if you don't want it to do it, that at all. Um, but usually you want to bring it in just a little bit. So this is kind of the perfect result. Now, 
if you zoom in, you can kind of see a little bit of an area like this. You can always double click that object because what this does is just creates an object over top. It just doesn't add a color to it. It just does an outline. So you can select this object and fix any of those nodes if needed. So we can bring all these down and kind of fix up this leave here. And same thing on this side, it kind of went in a little bit here. If you kind of just click those, it'll naturally fix that. So you can go around your t-shirt just to make sure, but otherwise this looks pretty good. And we can go ahead and proceed. Hey Peggy, welcome. All right, so now, once we create the auto boundary around it, our next step is deciding what type of mock-up we're creating. So if we go down the next steps, we have either cut out color change or cut out image. So this is a white t-shirt. So we're able to make this a color changing t-shirt. So in that case, I'm going to highlight my entire design and if it helps you can go to the wireframe because you want to make sure you include that box because otherwise the image actually is that box so if you don't select both and you only highlight your t-shirt and it looks like that this only has the top layer selected we want to make sure we get everything selected so we're just going to draw a box around move it just hit back and we know everything's selected now Hey Don, no problem. Welcome. All right, so now once we have both objects selected, we're going to hit cut out color change mockup. Now again, we're hitting this color change option because this is a white t-shirt. So if on our next example, I'll use some type of uh, color t-shirt and we'll use the other option the cut out image instead. So because this is a white product, we can do a color change mock-up. So we're gonna go ahead and left click. You're gonna kind of see the bar down here, load. Now once it does that, it's gonna get rid of our trace and now it's gonna leave us with our t-shirt. At this point, I can go ahead and change the color of my t-shirt. So this is the mock-up we just created. If I add a layer to it, you can see now how it doesn't have that white box on it. So now we just simply have our t-shirt. And you can save it. You can save it as a white. You can save it as any color t-shirt you'd like to. Alright, so now Let's just go, we'll go back to white. So our next step is creating our design placement. So our design placement is where do we want our design on this specific t-shirt? So if we're working with vectors, we can always kind of manipulate it once we actually create the mock-up. But for the majority we want to create is we got to decide, is this going to be a full chest? Is it going to be a pocket? Is it going to be, you know, something different where maybe it's going up the side? So that's our big question here. So most of the time we'll probably be doing a full chest. So what we want to do now is this is going to be most likely an adult t-shirt and the design width that's going to be on this t-shirt is probably going to be an average of around eight and a half to nine inches wide. So we're going to do a design placement at nine inches. So I'm just going to type in nine and we're going to, we're going to select the front and we're going to do create design placement. So this is going to throw up this red box right here up on my mockup now. So I can control this red box. Now, if you look up here, the size of this box is only three and a half inches wide by three inches tall. So what number you put in here, doesn't matter if if your box shows up a different size it's okay it's still going to represent nine inches 
So now we're gonna kind of size up our box and place it on our t-shirt where we want that logo showing up. Now, again, I just resized this to under three inches and it's two and a half inches tall. Even though we're setting it at that those dimensions, when we send a design there, the placement we're giving it is nine inches. So it doesn't matter what size this box is, it's going off the number we put in here. So once we have that placement all set up, now we need to select what folder it's going into. So this is pretty much a basic Gildan. Uh, most likely, this is pretty much a men's or even a unisex t-shirt. So I'm gonna put it in my men's folder. So I'm gonna drop down the uh, folder and I'm gonna put it in men's. And then I'm gonna name it Gildan Basic t-shirt or if it has a specific style or name I can name it that so I'm just gonna say ba Gildan basic t-shirt and then I'm gonna put CC because for me that reminds me that it's a color changing t-shirt t-shirt so you can put whatever you'd like maybe just a you know a certain number or symbol to represent it's a color changing or I just put CC at the end of it so once we select the folder and name it, we're gonna highlight our t-shirt with our red box and we're gonna hit save custom product. So it's gonna kind of blink and then it's gonna pop up and say, this product has been saved to men's and this is the name. So we're gonna hit okay and now We got a quick design. We'll make it nine inches. I'll go to my mock up tab. We'll go to our men's products. And right here, Gildan Basic T shirt, CC front. It's going to have a little preview right here. So we just left click and it throws it right there on our T shirt. And again, this is a color changing. So we can make that whatever style we want. All right, so any questions on creating a mock-up or adding a custom mock-up? Hey Sandra, welcome. All right, so let me see real quick. Let's go ahead and this time we'll search just a Gildan red shirt. And even something like this. <clears throat> so if it starts as a white on the inside, technically you could do some work and make like the white part of this color changing, um, but it's a little bit more work and it ends up being, it just doesn't come in as well. Um, so I would just, you know, even if you have shirts like this style, the raglan, um, I would still do it in multiple colors if you need those options. And someone asked, can we do a coffee mug? Sure. So we'll do a blank coffee mug. All right, so I just, I usually with stuff like this, I'll just go to Google, just blank coffee mug. If you wanted a certain color, you can do it that way too. Um, so let's say, you know, they're getting something unique and they want this one here. So I'm going to copy that image. And if, if you're ordering t-shirts 
from, you know, like Sandbar, uh, Alpha Broder, any of those sites, a lot of them will let you actually download their t-shirts for free, like their, their high resolution images. So if you're looking for a certain style, if that website has it, usually you can scroll down and actually download some of the images. All right, so let's go back to our mock-up creator. Again, same thing with this coffee mug. First thing we wanna to try to do is hit this create auto boundary. All right, so when it traced it, it went around the outside. Uh, let me change the color of that line so we can kind of see it. Now at the top here, what you can kind of see what it did is it didn't follow the outside perfect. Um, everything else is pretty good. A little bit on the inside here. So what we could, you could go two routes. You could just quickly try to edit this and see how, how that goes. Now one little thing we could do too is take the shape, our ellipse tool, and then just try to draw the shape up here so it's a little bit cleaner and once we have that set up we'll just weld it to our original and now that just goes all the way to the outside there. And this part, we'll just edit the nodes, bring it back. here I'm just gonna kind of slide over and then just kind of take off a little bit of these nodes this I'm gonna to try to just clean up the nodes here so I'm just highlighting and hitting delete and I'm just trying to straighten this line out and then I'm gonna move it all over to the right a little bit or sorry to the left a little bit those up a bit so what this does is it puts that nice trace to the outside but the error issue we're gonna run into is if we trace this the way it is right now what that does is it puts a trace around our mug but it doesn't cut out the inside here so it's going to keep that white. So what we want to do instead, before we actually make the trace, is we're going to take our B spline, so this right here, under the manual trace, and we're going to trace this part right to the inside. And I'm going to set this, I'm going to try to trace just to the inside line. So again, I don't want, to sh I don't want that white to show up, if possible, the white as my background color. So I'm going to the inside just a little bit, just like my auto trace, and that should help limit how much white shows up in our mock-up. So I'm gonna take this piece here in our original trace, select both of them and do a back minus front. So now when I move my trace out, you can actually see how it has the coffee handle coffee mug handle in it too. So if I put a full color to it, that's our object. 
So now once we get to this point, same procedure, only difference is we get to the part where we need to either select is this a cutout color change or a cutout image. So which one of these do I need to select for this mock-up for my coffee mug? Image, yeah, so exactly, we wanna do the image. So pretty much everyone said image, so again, everyone's correct on that one. We're gonna do cut out image because it's not a color changing mockup. So we'll go ahead and select left click, and that gives us just our mockup. Now if I put a background on it, again, you'll see that it's just our coffee mug. Right. So at this point, we go to our next add products and we need to select our design width. So right now it's set to nine uh, and it's nine inches. So if I set this square to nine inches, any design I put on here isn't gonna look, if you know, it's gonna want a nine inch design on this coffee mug to look good. So that's not gonna work. So what we wanna do is if you have this certain product you're using, like let's say I had these coffee mugs in stock, I would take a ruler and find out the design width area I have. So let's just say something like a mug like this. If I wanna go all the way around it, it might be like four inches wide, if maybe five, but most of the time it's probably gonna be close to three, three and a half inches. So I'll go 3.5. I'm gonna hit create design placement. And again, it might show up a little bit bigger. So we're gonna make this, we're gonna resize our square here. That's okay though, cause it still represents that three and a half. I'm just gonna set that right on my coffee mug. All right, so next we wanna select a folder. So I actually added a folder called Cups and Mugs. To do that, you're gonna select Add New Folder, create the folder name, so I said, We'll just name this one mugs, just so we'll run through a whole thing. And we're gonna hit okay. So that just created a folder. Now we're gonna name it, and I can say tall black coffee mug. All right, highlight everything, save custom product. It's gonna say it's been saved. We hit okay. So let's go back to our design here. Let's just say this is three inches wide now. I'm gonna select my design, mockups, mugs, tall black coffee mug. It's gonna show us a quick proof. Go ahead and click it, and then we can throw a design right on there. At this point, I can change the color to whatever I'd like. Um, I had a question. The red square is a suggested placement, correct? Um, so the red square, what that does is it's doing, it's doing a couple things for us. So one, it's setting our design width. So that's really important. So on our t-shirt, we made it nine inches. On our mug, we made it three and a half. So where we want our design to be located on the shirt, this is what the red box is, you know, representing. Now, just because we put a design in that specific area does not mean I can't take my design and move it up top here or move it up down here once it's on here or make it smaller or larger to fit this design. So the red, the red box is kind of a suggested placement, but you know, we're, we're intending it to be our, the placement of like the majority of our designs. So if, if I have this white t-shirt and you know what, this time they wanted a pocket tee instead, well, as, if that's the case, then I could, let's say I had a large design like this.
Now, if they wanted this design this time as a pocket, that, that doesn't mean I can't just shrink this down real quick, move it myself, and now it's a pocket seat. Our pocket size design. So we can still control it, but we definitely, you know, that red box and the design set place or the design width, we're setting that all up in advance for the majority of our designs where this placement and size of our design is going to be on that given mock up. All right, any other questions um, before we move over to the magic tab? And we also have on our site, we have a couple, I think we have like one or two free objects, like a mug or a glass on our site that you can actually download and import into the software just as practice or again just go to Google and copy and paste an object. Yeah, so that's a, actually a good point. We didn't really get to the manual trace. Um, in cases where you don't get a good trace of your initial shirt. So let's say here, my trace comes out or like the when I originally did the coffee mug, how it didn't really come out that good the first time. That's when you can do a manual trace. And for that, you just use the B spline. So you click this tool, you left click around your design and you manually, you're just left clicking, tracing your t-shirt or, or image. And then once you get to the whole thing, I'm just going to do it really quick. Obviously you'd want it more like how I started it, but once you get through the whole thing, now you're at the same point as what the auto trace did for you. So if you get an object, now, if you get an object that has a lot of different colors in it, it's going to be harder to recognize the outside and trace it really well. Um, so in those cases, you'll just use the manual tracing. And that's, you have the B-spline right here, just as a quick tool. Or if you're more comfortable with any of the other tracing tools, they're right here for you. And those are the same ones you'll find here, the majority of those. So... We usually teach like the beast line, but if you're more comfortable with, you know, a different tracing tool, those are there for you too. All right. All right. So now we'll move over to our magic tab. So, if you're currently not on the 5.7, um, you're not gonna see all the tabs I have. Um, so if that's the case, just definitely, if you go to our website <coughs> and go to your downloads, you'll be able to get the newest version under the order or when you purchase the design wizard or the upgrade. All right. So have we ran through these tools yet or is everyone pretty new to them? Mostly new. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So <clears throat> the contour punch out is going to be our first tool. And what we use this for is uh, sometimes in our live templates, we'll have a design that might have like a contour around the outside of it. And I'll go ahead and create our own design right now, just so we can see how we can use this tool when we're designing, or if you run across possibly a live template that might have a similar layout. So we'll write our soccer text, just make it a little bit larger here. And I'll go to add artwork and Grab a soccer ball. Okay. 
So I'll go ahead and move this to the back layer. So now I have my soccer text. Let's go ahead and make that gold. Now sometimes we'll set up like a live template and we'll add a contour to the outside and we'll make it a white contour. So our design kind of looks something like this where now it looks like it's been kind of separated from our soccer ball. So what the contour punch out will do for us is we're gonna select the contour, hit contour punch out, and wherever that contour is, it will just separate from our soccer ball. So it'll actually punch everything out through our design and get rid of, so I no longer have my contour around the outside of the soccer. So it literally just punches that through the object behind it. So if I make this contour red, just so we can maybe stand out a little bit, it's very similar to a back minus front, yes, but because it's a contour, without this one co click button, you'd have to break it apart and then separate and then do a back minus front with the two objects. So it just does it all in one click, but yes, it's very similar to a back minus front. Now, what this will, won't do for us is if we have multiple objects, so I'm just gonna put this square behind everything, what it does is it finds the first object and punches through that, or it's giving us an error on this one. So what we want to do is try to group these together. And then if the two objects are grouped, the feature will work. But otherwise, if you have two objects behind it, it's going to give you an error. So one, it will just go right through it. Two will give you an error unless it's been broken apart. Right, so any questions on the contour punch out? And yeah, if, if you ever have two overlapping parts or like two overlapping layers now, you can use the back or the contour punch out to kind of separate them. So let's search our mascots real quick. Bring this in here. that and so if I had two layers like this So what I could do, let's say I've had a design like this and I simply have this bears behind it, but I want to kind of get everything trapped around it. You can add a contour and kind of see the distance. We change it to white and you can see the distance that it's going to remove. And once you like the distance that it has removed from the bear, you just hit that contour punch out and it'll remove it from those objects. I accidentally selected two objects when I pushed it, so it crashed on me real quick. <clears throat> While that's loading back up, do we have any questions on the punch out?
No, the contour gets removed too. So the contour will no longer be there once you hit the contour punch out. So it's kind of getting it ready to cut as well because it's going to remove that, that contour for you. All right, so the next button we have is our stone outline. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up one of our live templates. And we can use just a simple one like this here. All right, so what our stone outline button does Yeah, so we had a question. So you create the contour with the contour tool rather than the magic boundary. Yeah, so now you could do it both ways. The magic boundary, now if I didn't have a contour around my design already, I could just use the magic boundary tool. If there's already a contour around or you added one, you can use the contour punch out instead. So designs will be set up differently, especially some of our live templates. Um, so and the contour the magic boundary what that does is you know it does pretty much the same look but your guess you're plugging in a number and then hitting it you might not like it so you go back you adjust the number and try it again the contour lets you see the distance of how far you're going to cut off before and then you just hit it once so those, those are kind of the differences but essentially you could use the magic boundary tool to get a very similar or the same look as what we just did with the contour punch out. All right, so with our design here, the next button we have is our stone outline. So the stone outline, what that's gonna do for us is when we have these types of templates or any, you know, any layout we're creating ourselves to, let's say we have this baseball and we want it to be a little bit bigger but I want to add a little bling to this, so I want a row of rhinestones to the outside. The stone outline is gonna take care of all that for you with the one click button. So instead of me having to create a boundary around this, separate enough distance from all the other parts of my design, and then lay the stones down, it doesn't matter what layer our baseball is on, so if it's in the back layer, I don't have to move it up first or to the front, I just simply select my baseball, hit stone outline. It's gonna crop everything around it perfectly and then add my row of stones. Hey Jerry, how are you today? So the one thing the stone outline won't do is if you just have a single object and you hit stone outline, and let me move this to a new page because it might still be reading, trying to read the text on it. It's gonna give you something like this. So if it doesn't see an object behind the actual baseball, it won't apply the stone outline correctly. So it needs to be behind it to work. Otherwise, you get that error where it puts the stones too far around our design like this. So it wants this object, what it's looking for is to kind of subtract through whatever's behind it and then add the stones. So it's just defaulting and then it's adding the stones around it instead. So our example here, again, you can see it will just easily go right around our text like that. Any questions on the stone outline? All right. 
So our next one is our stone knockout. So have you guys, we went over the magic tab and we kind of did the knockout feature sometime last week. So does everyone know what the knockout feature does? That's when we did like the Eagles baseball. So we'll do we'll do a little example real quick. So So we'll go ahead and set up our text. So I'm going to move my spacing in. So we have our text set up here. So our original knockout button <coughs> what that does for us is I'm going to go ahead and lay our bear on top. So on our edit tab, we have our knockout or KO button here. So it's set to about 0 0.02. You highlight your text, left click, and where that bear overlaps with our text, it creates this knockout design. You can also put it to the outside. If I go outside my design like this, instead of a left click, I right click. And not only will it trace everything over the text, but also keep the outside pieces together too. So what our knockout, our stone knockout does is it creates that same look, but it also adds stones to the outside of our design. So you highlight, left click. This inside, what this is saying right here is when we do one of these knockouts, let's set this to 0 0.06. This distance around our design here, this knockout distance, is correlates to this number right here. So this 0 0.06, that's the dif distance that it knocks out around our design here. So when we do a stone knockout, we can control how far the inside knockout is because the stone knockout has to be 0.17. So it makes it really large if you do 0.17 all the way around. So this lets us control the inside. So 0 0.06 is a pretty good standard size, but if you want to go a little bit smaller or a little bit more, you'll change this number right here. So same thing, left click but now it's just gonna add a nice stone outline to my design. So it doesn't add the stones where it's gonna clear everything. So we still will have to go through and just edit our stones. So there might be like an overlap here or there, or there might be a place we just kinda need to nudge still. And in that case, we'll use our mark top or mark bottom or merge stones to quickly edit those type of designs. And the knockouts usually will look a lot better if we use like a full, instead of just like an outline. So almost if, let's see if I, just mark fill the inside here and see if we can see this a little bit better.
So usually when it's a more solid object like this and you put it on top, it shows up a lot nicer in our design. So we'll go ahead and do that. Highlight, stone knockout. Get some of these crevices it's trying to go to the inside too. Yeah, and you can see when I'm going back, someone said it would take me about 10 minutes. You can see when I'm going back how many steps that's actually saving us. Um, I think with that knockout tool, it's close to about 10 when it adds the stones around the outside of it. All right, so our next one is the stone outline with a contour. So this is a pretty easy one. Um, it just, you can pretty much any type of object or if it works really well with text, like let's say I just have the word princess, I go to a nice script font, maybe like Pacifica or Pacifico, just draw that out, stone outline with contour. Now our contour again, you can set that. And what that distance is, is this red line right here. So it takes your object, it adds a row of stones. Now again, it's not going to edit, we're going to still use our mark, mer our mark top or bottom of our merge to edit everything. But it's going to add a layer of stones to the outside along with a contour layer too. So you can do that with text really quick. You can add a clip art image and quickly add a row of stones and an outline to it. So whatever, whatever we're looking, you know, certain object, anything like that, we can always just quickly add a row of stones with another minor layer around it too. So let's say we had cheerleader like this. I can just make this a little bit bigger now. The pom poms are a little bit hard for the stones to read perfectly through there, but the rest of it is set up pretty nicely. But what we could do beforehand is, I'm not sure, if, I think this might have been overview one. We can take our smooth tool and smooth out those palm, palms a little bit. And that, by doing stuff like that, will help with how those stones are laid around our design. So look how nice that looks now, just from smoothing those out just a little bit like that. Did we all see the stones before I did that? So let me go back. So this is how the pom-poms came in when we did the contour. Look how bad the st that stone placement was. It's trying to follow these jagged lines. So it's very, very hard for this to lay stones like that. So what we do is right here, we have our shape underneath that. It's called the smooth tool. So when we have jagged lines, this helps too if you're ever using like glitter vinyl or a thick one where those corners around like a star or a really sharp corner doesn't cut very well. Just take the smooth tool, select that image and go around the outside a little bit and just smooth that up. And now when you do that, look how nice. I mean, honestly, the only movement we're going to do is just pretty much nudge that one and I don't have to edit anything on that side. Here there's a couple still, but just a couple nudges and we have that area fixed. All right, and the last button, very, very easy. Um, we just had a lot of people asking for just a simple window decal. So that's what we created. 
you go ahead and click it and this is set up as a live template so you go ahead and hit find text team name here Mustangs center forward let's say 15 midfield So we'll do the pirates down here, and I'll put Braden River up top. So that's all that button is. It's just a quick little window decal setup. Then you can take the soccer ball, hit change artwork, and I could go to decal live, find the soccer player, and go ahead and just switch that out too if I want it. So it's just a quick little decal button as the last one here. All right. All right, so that pretty much wraps up tonight's webinar. Um, before we end, did you guys have any additional questions? Um, Jerry, it has to, to change anything, it has to be changed to curves, right? What do you, um, what do you mean change anything? The text or the odd, the clip art? Um, not necessarily. It's, <clears throat> it's really any object. So this is still text and you can change as long as it has something to change it with, you can hit change artwork. But yeah, the I mean, pretty much the decal is cut ready. The only thing I would do is just, if I wanted one color, I would just weld it all. But other than that, it's, it's cut ready. <clears throat> awesome, awesome. Well, again, if you guys run into anything else, just give us a call at 941-755-1696 or shoot us an email at info at com, and just remember to always ask for Joe. Um, a couple other questions come in. How do I install Ultimate Rhinestone HD? Um, Evangeline, um, you should just be able to get the download files from the site or the uh, flash drive depending what you purchased uh, but if you give us a call tomorrow we can just help you run through and install all that for you any possibilities of manual of a manual in addition to videos um, I don't know if there's gonna if there's gonna be like a physical manual uh, mostly the video tutorials are are manual um, so we do have the Corel Draw manuals. So we actually listed those on the site not too long ago. They're X6 manuals, but they're a lot of the same features of Corel um, are the same. So you can purchase that book, but as far as us, we don't really have too many, like we don't have like a written manual. Um, Maria, how do I move TRW purchase files from my PC um, to an external drive? You should just be able to do a copy and paste. Um, but if you need help with that or if it's not working, just give us a call and we can show you real quick. Don, definitely um, shoot, me an e shoot us an email and just ask for me and uh, I'll get in touch with you. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we got a couple webinars coming up this week. They should all be listed by tomorrow. Um, I'll have one Thursday. Matt's going to have his live probably Wednesday, um, probably with either a webinar in the morning or live in the morning, then a webinar at night. So one of those kind of layouts. So um, by tomorrow, everything should be up and listed. And then tonight, Matt should be going live probably pretty, pretty soon. He hasn't interrupted yet, so that's good. <laughs> But uh, he'll probably be going live soon with his ass mat. So, otherwise, you guys have a great night, and we'll see you Thursday. All right, take it easy.